So how much of your work are you doing in the cloud these days? Maybe on SharePoint or OneDrive and how much of that work feels quite manual, repetitive stuff you're doing every day, maybe changing a row on a specific Excel spreadsheet every day. It's demoralizing. And the good news is there is a better way. Over the next 10 minutes, I'm gonna teach you how to automate tasks using Power Automate. Now, in order to access Power Automate, you do need a Microsoft 365 account, but if you're using Excel at all these days, it's very likely you have one. So just head over to Google, search Microsoft 365, go to the login, do your logins and your authentications. You're gonna come to a welcome page that looks something like this. Microsoft 365 welcome page. We're gonna to go to apps and then to OneDrive because this is where we can store all our files in the cloud using Microsoft 365. I'm gonna to go to my files and I've linked to this folder in the video description below, the Doggy Football League folder. You can see we've got two files in there. We've got all results and then we've got match day two results. Yes, we've got a classic data transfer task here. We want to transfer the week two results into the all results sheet. In the past, we might've done it with Excel VBA. Now we want to do it using Power Automate. So how do we get started with Power Automate? Where does it live? So let's go back to the Microsoft 365 welcome page. Just type in Power, go to Power Automate. This is gonna take us over to Power Automate. You might have to do some more logins and authentications here when you work in Power Automate. There is a lot of logging in. So this is the Power Automate welcome page. We're gonna to go to My Flows. This is where your flows are saved. Now let's deal with the key concepts here. What's a flow? A flow is very much like a macro, a VBA routine in Excel. It's a computer program and it allows us to automate something, to do some actions, to get something done. A Power Automate flow doesn't live in an Excel file, doesn't live on your desktop usually, it lives in the cloud. So we're gonna go ahead, create a new flow here. I'm gonna click new flow. Then we've got some options. We can use a template. You might wanna try those. I've had some mixed results with those. We're gonna build our own flow from blank. Now you can see we've got options here. We can have an automated flow, an instant flow, a schedule flow. That's because with Power Automate, you can schedule flows. Run every day, run every week, run every hour. You can make flows start when something happens. Somebody deletes a file, someone adds a file to a folder, someone submits a Microsoft form. So there's different ways to get these cloud flows going. We're gonna use an instant cloud flow and we're gonna choose the trigger here to manually trigger a flow. Second key concept is a trigger, a trigger. What makes the flow start? We're gonna do that manually, but as I just said, there's many ways to trigger a flow and you can schedule a flow too. So we're gonna manually trigger it and then give the flow a name. I'm gonna say transfer DFL data data. There we go. And we're now ready to get our flow started. I'm going to scroll down and hit create. And this is what it looks like when we're working with Power Automate in the free version. Anyway, this is what the interface looks like. Next key concept is a step or an action, a step or an action. So an action is doing something useful. So we might be listing rows from an Excel file. We might be deleting a file. We might be adding a file. We might be creating a SharePoint list, something useful we want to do and automate as part of our process, as part of our flow. So we're gonna to go to new step here and then we've got choose an operation and we've got another concept here, which is connectors, connectors. Now connectors are logins to different parts of SharePoint, could be Excel online, could be Microsoft Forms, could be Microsoft Teams or Outlook. Those connections, you've got to make sure they're all working by doing your logins and authentications there. So we've got the concept of connectors too. What are we working with? We're working with Excel online. And what do we want to do first? We want to list rows pleasant in a table. Now you'll see these actions, they all say business after them. These are only accessible to, if you're using a business account. So if you're using a personal account, a Hotmail account or something like that, you will not have access to these. You have to be working with a business account to access them. So 
list rows pleasant in a table. This is what I want to do. Sounds a bit boring, doesn't it? Why are we just listing rows? Well, this is almost like loading the rows into Power Automate's memory so we can then subsequently do something interesting with them. We want to transfer the data to another file, but first we've got to list them. You can see straight away it says test connection failed, classic Power Automation error. That's because our connection, our connector account is not the right account. So I'm going to go back to my business account here, click on it, and now Power Automate is happy because we've got the right connector in there. Location, it's going to be OneDrive. OneDrive for business, I'm using a business account. Document library is OneDrive again. Then it gets a bit more interesting because we want to select a file. Now remember, our folder is the Doggy Football League folder. So I'm going to click on there and that's going to take me to a file. Now the source file is going to be our match day results. So this file contains the data we want to transfer elsewhere. Now we've got some options here. We're not going to talk about these yet. We'll talk about them later. And then a table. Yes, the data, it's best to tabulate the data. I don't always recommend that. Fans of the channel will know it's best to tabulate the data when we're using Power Automate. And if I go to the match day two results file, I can see the name of this table is table week two. So Power Automate has found that table and said, do you want to use that table? So this is our first step. Saying to Power Automate, this is the file we want to use. And in the background, Power Automate is going to go ahead and list those rows, just kind of write it into its memory so we can do something useful with those rows. And I've just gone ahead and saved the flow there. So we now want to do something with that data. So we're going to have another step once again, it's going to be concerning Excel online. And this time we want to add, add a row to a table. So I'm going to go ahead and click this. Process we have to work through is fairly similar here. So we have to point Power Automate to the, our OneDrive and then to our document library, which is likely to be OneDrive, and then to the, the specific file that uh, we want to use. And I'm, this time I'm going to select our destination file. So I'm going to go ahead, Doggy Football League here. Click into this folder. And then our destination file is going to be the DFL or results because we're collect, collating our results here. We'll talk about these in a second. These are helpful. And then we're going to go to table and table or results. So this is the name of the table in the collated file, the collated data file. This table is called uh, table all results and yeah so i can click on table here and this does say table all results okay now you can see we've got some things some more information appearing here what's this information so the columns in the table power automate has listed to allow us to tell power automate what data we want to go in each column now in our case the columns are all the same you can check that but if the columns were different, you could point different data to different columns. How cool is that? What do we want to do? What data do we want to go in, into match day? Well, we want to take that list rows present in a table action. We want to take an output from that, um, from that action. So I'm going to click on match day. I'm going to click on match day here. Then what else do we want to do? Go into add row into a table again. Uh, so home, I'm going to click on home from the previous action and we're going to work through the others away. We're going to click on away here and then finally score. We're going to click on score here. So really quite a lot of flexibility and power on offer in Power Automate in terms of the things you can do. And believe me, we're only scratching the surface here. So that's it really, fairly straightforward, hopefully. Manually trigger the flow, list rows pleasant in a table, and then add a row into a table. Power Automate has added what's effectively a loop because we're looping through each row and then doing something to each row. So we've got a, an apply to each loop there. Power Automate did that automatically in the background for me. So save the flow. Then we're gonna test the flow here. And we're gonna manually start the flow. I'm gonna hit test. And then, yeah, we get the option here to just check those connections. If you need to point to a different account or do some logins there, you've got the opportunity to do it. I'm going to hit run flow and then it tells me my flow run has successfully started. My flow is running and I can see Excel working through this. Now, something to bear in mind, if we're using this 
add row to a table action, it's not very fast. It's not very fast at all. It takes two to three seconds to add a row to a table. So if you've got a big data set, there's other ways to do this with Power Automate using Office Scripts. Let me know if you wanna see a video on that. But I can see your flow ran successfully, took about 16 seconds, and if it's been successful, you can see, go into our all results file, the data has come into the file. Beagle being the first game, Greyhound being the away team in the last game, and I can see that data has come into the file. How cool is that? Well, just to confirm what's happened here, just click on this back arrow and it takes us to the welcome page for this particular flow. You can see we've got the flow uh, name here. We've got some basic information. We've also got the run history here. This is really useful. You can see when the flow last ran, ran you can click through here and this can really help with debugging. If a flow isn't working, you can get information here to help you. If you enjoyed learning about Power Automate, check out this video on another Excel automation tool.